All right, let's take a look now at the inverses. All right, making sure everybody's clear. What type of equation is this right here? Exponential, that is exponential. So if I say, uh, define the inverse, if that is exponential, what type of function will be, um, what type of function will be the inverse? Logarithmic. Yeah, I'm gonna just say f of x is exponential. Therefore, the inverse should be logarithmic. All right, logarithmic. All right, what's our first step when we find our inverse? Switch x and y. So f of x represents y, because oftentimes we say y equals f of x that way. So we're going to say this f of x is the same thing as y. We're changing the x and y, so it becomes x equals 2 times 4 raised to the power of y minus 2 minus 3. That's our first step. Uh, Jaden, as we solve this algebraically, what would you do first from here? Said add three. Do you all agree with them? I agree with them. Said add three. Let's add three to both sides. We're trying to isolate the Y, by the way. That's our goal. Get the new Y by itself. So I add three. And so I have X plus three equals two times four raised to the power of Y minus two. Kevin in the back, what you thinking? As you examine this, what would be the next step here? Five by two. Ah, what do y'all think? Is he wrong or is he right? He's correct. And we have to get rid of that multiplication of two, so we divide by two. Very good. So now we have x plus 3 divided by 2 is equal to 4 raised to the power of y minus 2. Great job. All right, we've isolated the exponential. Now what can we do? We switch it to a logarithm. So I liked how uh, Dr. Milano, as I mentioned, he, how, when I was visiting with him, he said, uh, do around the world, meaning this, instead of being raised over here, you're switching it. It's going to be this base of that equals this. It goes, he called it around the world. I like that. Here's how AP Classroom shows it. They show taking a log four on each side. This is their step that they do. I want to make you aware of how they might do it. And so they do it like this. That's the step they would do. And then they would follow the properties where this, what do you, can you do with a log that has a power? Uh, that's if it's uh, the values are multiplying. You do power property, which means move the power either to the front or the back, but either way you multiply it. That's how AP Classroom does it. And then the log four or four will cancel each other. But this gets moved either to the front or the back. So what do we have now? What we have now is log of four, log base four of X plus three divided by two equals y minus 2. And we have one final step left to get the, the inverse. Add 2. Good. Question about the adding 2. Does the add the 2 add to this 4 right there? Does it add to this 3 up here? What about the, this 2 in the denominator? No, it doesn't even go inside the logarithm because this 2 is not inside the logarithm. That would just be bad math. Now we have it isolated. So I'm going to come back. And what symbol means inverse? F negative one, very good. X equals log base four of X plus three divided by two with the plus two on the outside. A vertical translation of two on the outside. Just a review since it was uh, technically 24 hours for, ago for y'all. A logarithm's range, a logarithm's range, what is always true about every single logarithm without any, unless there's a restriction, but taking away the weird case that they say we restrict, restrict it, what is true of every single log's range? All reals. Is the domain all real numbers? No. The inside has to be positive. Do y'all want to find that for practice or you just want to power through? With practice? 
So what has to be true about the logarithm's domain? Has to be positive. So to find the domain, you would take the inside, x plus 3 over 2 has to be positive. What symbol in mathematics means positive? Do I put just a plus sign? Greater than 0. That's what you need. Okay, how would I solve that? What do you think, Kevin, in the front? What could I do to try to get this x isolated? There's opposites we could do here. Talk to me about this 2. What's the 2 doing? What's the opposite of dividing by 2? Let's multiply both sides by 2. So I have x plus 3 is greater than, what's 0 times 2? OK, so x plus 3 has to be greater than 0. Now what? Subtract 3. And we find out x has to be greater than negative 3. There's our domain. That right there is the domain. Whoops. And you already told me, but I did not write it down. If I was doing the range, what's true for every single logarithm's range? All reals. Okay, could you, at this stage, without doing any more math work, could you state with confidence what the domain range is of the exponential up here? Yeah, we could. What's the domain of the original function? All real numbers. We switch X and Y. It'd be all reals. Since this one's range is all reals, this one's domain, the original function's domain is all reals, what would the original function's range be? y is greater than negative 3. That means you would have that horizontal asymptote at negative 3 on this equation. You'd have a horizontal asymptote at negative 3. Here, we'd have a vertical asymptote at negative 3. That's the constant when we talked about the limits from last class. That would be the constant value. OK? Uh, I have one more finding an inverse. This time, I'm starting you off with what function? What type of function? A log. So g of x is a logarithm. What does that mean our inverse function will be? Exponential. Exponential. Great. All right. For first step, normally we say that y equals g of x. So if I was going to switch x and y, that means g of x becomes x. x because it was y. Now I make it x times or equals. Goodness gracious. x equals 5 log base 7 of. 3x plus 1? 3y plus 1, very good, minus 2. Donna, what would you do first now that we've done that? Put that there for the record. Plus 2. That was harder because I just put the multiplication. I was, could have thrown you off, but can't fool you. Kind of gave away. She's correct. We add 2 first. Sorry, what would you do from here? She says divide. Do you agree or disagree? Ah, uh, not so confident. I am. You divide. Divide by five. Let's divide by five. Good work, Suri. So now we have x plus 2 divided by 5 equals log 7 of 3y plus 1. Sion, what would you do here? Yeah, base 7 on both sides. We're going to switch this to exponential. So again, use Dr. Milano's. I, I like picking up things from the teacher. The way he said, in case you haven't figured out, Earlier in the year, I said, instead of having 7 raised to this, raise 7 over here, switch them. He says, do around the world. Mm -hmm. So instead of 7 going this way, we're going to take 7 and go that way. And that will equal this one over here. Go around the world. So whichever way it leads you around the world, you do it that way. Since it's already being 7 raised this way, you would go the opposite path. And so 
Uh, the way AP Classroom shows it to you is it would show you as seven being raising both sides like this. That's how they would do it. And again, a seven and a log seven, what's the relationship between those two? They will cancel, yeah, they would cancel. And so we now have uh, seven raised to the X plus two over five equals, these two cancel, three Y plus one. Almost done, two little algebra steps left. Antonio, I'll let you shoot first, what do you think? We don't have to log it. It would just get us right back to where we were in green. So we're trying to get this Y solved for. That's what our goal is now. Trying to get this Y by itself. Subtract one. Y'all agree or disagree with them? Good. Okay. Question about this, Jacoby. Do I say seven minus one is six? Do I say X plus two minus one is X plus one? Do I say five minus one is four? What do I do with that minus one then? Put it on the outside, good. So it's gonna be seven raised to the X plus two over five, minus one on the outside equals three Y. We're on a last step here, Moises. What you thinking? <clears throat> Divide by three, y'all agree with them or disagree with them? And since multiplication distributes, division distributes, everything gets divided by three. So our inverse equation would be g negative 1 of x equals, that's in place of y, uh, 7 to the power of x plus 2 divided by 5 minus 1 all divided by 3. Pretty tricky, isn't it? Another way you could write this if you wanted to is if you're dividing by 3, you could put the uh, the a is one third times it this way, like that's the a value times seven to the power of x plus two over five. So I'm making my a be one third. Now, if I did it this way, I would need to just on the k part make it one third. I would have to distribute and break them up. So now it looks like a is one third and k is one third. That's probably a cleaner way of seeing it. That's probably the way if, you, if this was your actual test problem, it would come in this form like that. That is how I would expect it to be written. Uh, but they're mathematically equal. Both of those two inverses, they're mathematically equal to one another. Instead of just dividing everything by three, I divided each factor by three. So one third up here is an A value. This is the K negative one third there, if that makes sense. With exponentials, the answer is an exponential. What is all reals? Was it domain or was it range with exponentials? Think about the graph. The domain would be all reals. This one's domain would be all reals. Its range would not be all reals, though. The domain is all reals. The range is not, though. It, uh, we have a positive number. Base is greater than 1, so it's growth. So think of this. What's the lowest this graph, this value would ever grow? What is the constant, I'm trying to say, for your horizontal asymptote? It's the constant over here. What's the value? Remember how I used the letter K before? Negative That's why I was using the letter K. It's negative one third. So here, the range would be Y is greater than negative one third. The K will be your horizontal asymptote on an exponential function. That K is the horizontal asymptote every time. So if there's no number there, it's a zero. If there is a number there, that's the horizontal asymptote. Because this is uh, positive values above the do you think of it going being above the x-axis? That's why it's greater than. If this had had a negative in the front, like a uh, reflection, if it was always going down further, then it would be why it's less than negative one third. But that's why that's your domain range. Questions over that? I only got one more for you in this review. Uh, where is it? Here it is.